What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in this video I wanted to talk about some tips that help make house modeling and SketchUp easier. Before I get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course that I created to basically provide a more in-depth training for people that want to learn how to use SketchUp. So in that course I cover everything from starting off with the basic tools, then getting into more advanced functions like interior design modeling, modeling for layout, and uh, also some photorealistic rendering stuff. So if that's something you're interested in, you really want to take your SketchUp training to the next level and get more in-depth, make sure you check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this video, I guess, is a bit of a collection of tips that I've picked up from modeling different houses and uh, that sort of thing in SketchUp. And so these are things that are all going to make your life a little bit easier. And one thing I will note is you don't have to do anything this way. There's really a bunch of different ways that you can do a lot of this stuff. The key is you need to figure out what works for you and do that. But some of these tips may be helpful. So to start off, I want to talk a little bit about creating your roof. So generally what's going to happen when you create a house in SketchUp is you're going to start off and you're going to draw basically the floor layout and then you're going to use the push-pull tool to extrude that up. So in this case I'm going to extrude this up to probably a height of like 12 feet. And you can see how I've got this shape and it's a little bit complicated. And to just kind of go parallel with that this would be more the simple kind of roof. And so a lot of the time what you would do and so let's say we're going to create a simple gable roof well, what you can do is you can draw a line down the middle of each one of these shapes and then use the move tool to move that up in order to create your slope so in this case what you can do is I have this line that I've drawn in here and then I'm going to use the move tool by tapping the M key I'm going to click on this point and I'm going to tap the up key to lock this to the blue axis. And you can see how this is automatically folding um, when I do this. And so let's say this is going to have a height of six feet. You can see how when I move that line up, this automatically kind of folds that roof. And so in the case of this roof, you could also just come in here and you could just draw a line up and then a line from these two points and you could erase this and you could push pull this back to create this roof. So there's a couple different ways that you could do this one. The trick is when you get into a roof like this one it gets a little bit more complicated. And so what you could do is you could do that same thing where you draw this line up and then you use the push pull tool to extrude this back. But what you'd have to do is you'd have to come in and you'd have to draw the same thing over here and then you'd have to push pull this face so that these things intersect. And that definitely works, but it's a little bit more work. Whoops. And you just push pull this and use kind of inferencing to make sure this runs into this wall. So that definitely works fine, but what would be a lot easier is if you just came in here and you just drew a line from this midpoint to this midpoint, and then from this midpoint to wherever this runs into this line, and then you could select these segments and just move them up that way. And you can see how what this does is this kind of auto folds your roof in here so that this actually, uh, everything kind of lines up the way that you want it to. So you can definitely use that line moving strategy in order to create your basic roof layout. And so the next thing I want to talk about is creating the rake. And so the rake is basically the, uh, basically the piece that kind of overhangs on your roof. And generally what we're going to do when we create the rake is we're just going to draw a line from this point to this point and then you can click on this face and you can use the offset tool to offset this out. So what I did is I clicked on this face, I tapped the F key and then I clicked on this point. And you can see how that let, lets me offset a line off the edge here. In this case let's say we want this to be six inches, I can just click again and then you can just erase out these extra lines. And then now what we're going to do is we're just going to use the push pull tool in order to push pull this back. And so sometimes what happens is your face may be in here kind of backwards and I think over here will probably be a better example. But what you're going to do in this case is you're just going to use the push pull tool to push this out forward. 
and then push this back across this face. And one thing you're going to notice is when you run into this edge right here, this is going to stop you. And the reason this is going to stop you is because this only wants to let you push pull this face um, until it runs into something in the default mode. But what you can do is you can see how right now this isn't letting me do this. Well, if you tap the control key with the push pull tool active, what that's going to do is that's going to put this in create new face mode. Once you put this in create new face mode, then this is going to let you pull this through to the back side. So you can see how I can pull through that wall by putting it in create new face mode. And to do that, I just tap the control key. So you have the push pull tool active tap the control key and you'll go into create new face mode and that's going to allow you to push pull through this through this edge and what you would do is you'd push pull this to the back face over here and then you just push pull it again one more time across this side and then you could just do the same thing across this face so you use the offset tool to offset this out six inches you can erase out your extra push pull it forward 12 inches and then rotate around to the back side and push pull it to the back and basically what you would do in this case is first of all you'll notice that this is actually letting you overlap this on this front side so for some reason that this doesn't always stop you from push pulling through faces but in this case all you're going to do is you're just going to move your mouse and you're just going to use inferencing because um, you can see with the push pull tool active you don't have to have your mouse over this face in order to move this and so you can just move your mouse to the top of this roof and what that's going to do is that's going to push pull this back to this intersection point right here. And so you can see how you're able to create this roof over here by doing that. And you may need to come in here and erase out a couple extra lines. So in the case of this more simple roof, you just do the same thing. You just draw a line across this face. Use the offset tool. And then you just push pull it forward 12 inches. Push pull this to the back. Push pull this to the back face, and then push pull it again 12 inches. So you can see how you can create your roofs real easily by doing that. And so sometimes you're going to want to create more complex roofs. And when you want to create more complex roofs, you need to not be afraid to use an extension because a lot of roof types are going to be a little bit harder to create. And so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an extension from TIG and it's just his roof creation extension. And I'll link to this in the notes below. I did a tutorial on this extension before, but basically you can just select this top face. You can go to extensions, roof, and you can select the option for like a hipped roof and that's going to let you set things like the slope, like the fascia size, the soffit size, um, lots of different things and then click OK. What that will allow you to do is that will allow you to create a more complex roof very simply. And there's other different kinds of roof types in there as well, but there's no reason for you to try to figure out how to do these yourself if there's an extension that does these really easily like this. So don't be afraid to use extensions to create complex things like roofs. And so for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to group these two and just kind of hide them. And we're just going to focus on this house right here. And so basically what we're going to do for this house is the first thing I want to do, and this is something that you should get in the habit of doing, is grouping your different kinds of geometry. And so the reason for that is sometimes you're going to want to be able to turn on and off things like your roof. Um, so you're going to want to be able to put them on different layers. And you also don't necessarily want all this geometry uh, merging together. So like, for example, if I was to come in here and start moving things like this wall, you can see how since everything's merged together, it gets really difficult to make changes. Well, what you can do is I could drag a box across this roof, for example. I could right click on it and I could make it a group. And so now what I can do is I can come in and hide that so I can see the interior of my model. And so once I hide that, then I can also come in here and I can put my exterior walls in a group. And you can even come over into your outliner and you can rename these. So in this case, I would rename this exterior wall just by right clicking on the group in the outliner and just naming it. Or for this one, I would right click on this and I would rename this roof. And so then what happens is I can tell what my different groups are looking in my outliner. And I guess that's a really good tip too, is if you use the outliner to keep your groups and components organized, then it's a lot easier to come in here and make different changes and that sort of thing. 
And so another great tip is if you take these like if you take your exterior elements in a house and you group them together, so if I was to select my exterior walls and select my roof, I could go in here and I could make these a group by right clicking on them and clicking make group. And I could rename these exterior or house exterior. And I could put these on a layer called exterior. And so if I do that, all I have to do is I just have to select this group, go up to my entity info, and set my layer to exterior. And then what I can do is I can turn that on and off. And you'll notice my floor got dropped in here. I'm going to cut it out, and I'm going to go outside of this group, and I'm going to do an edit paste in place because I don't necessarily want my floor in there and for some reason I'd accidentally selected that but what I'm going to do is now I can turn my exterior on and off so that I can access my actual floor plan on the inside so if you were going to come in here and you were going to model your interiors you could turn that you could turn your exterior on and off using this layer that we've created so that you can get in here and actually work on your floors so let's say for example that I was to come in here and I was to model this window in this wall. And let's say that I wanted to repeat this window a couple different times. Well one thing I could do is I could take all of this and I could group this geometry and I could make a copy of it. So I could use the move tool in copy mode and put it along this face like this. The problem is even though I have two windows on this face right now, let's say I wanted to come back and I wanted to change both of these windows. Well, the way that I did that, that's not going to work very well because these windows aren't linked in any way. So I could come in here and let's say I added materials to this um, just as an example. Let's say that I was to add like a glass material to this object. What you're going to notice is this one over here didn't change and the reason for that is because these aren't linked in any way. And so when you do this, when you start making copies of objects that you know that you're going to use more than one of and you want them to match up, you want to make sure that you make these components rather than groups. And so you saw how I selected this. I right clicked and I clicked make group. Well, what you want to do instead is you want to right click and you want to click make component. And what make component is going to do is that's going to allow you to create basically an object that's going to repeat within your model. So in this case, I'm going to call this, we'll just call this exterior window. And now, if I make a copy of this, and we'll just rotate it so that it matches up with this wall. Looks like everything's lined up. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to manually cut the hole in this wall. And uh, there's there's some ways around that as well, but um, we're not going to talk about that too much in this video. I may link to that in the notes below. But basically now, if I was to come in and I was to make a change to one of these, you'll notice that anything I do to the one is also happening in the other because they're linked. And so now if I come in here and do things like adding materials, or if I was to split this window up, you can see how any changes that I make to this one is are also going to get made in this one. And so what that's going to do is that's going to make things a lot easier to make changes in the future. So this video is getting a little bit long, so probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to break the interiors up into a second video. Hopefully these tips were helpful to you. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Um, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month, so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.